Uh, anything that does substantive shutdown of the economy is is really really dangerous because without without that economy, people they they don't have resources to solve their own problems. Right? Um, the markets the markets can solve enormous amounts of problems. We need it as a tool, right, to help us work through this. To prove again that bald is beautiful, we're continuing on with our segments of hot bald men. County Commissioner from El Paso County, Stan v Vanderwerf, thank you for being with us. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you, John, for having me. And uh, I'm proud that I don't have a whole lot of hair on the top of the head. Yeah. Do you yeah. have the same problem that, that I have that women are actually like clinging on to you so often that it, they're invading your space? Well, I don't know about that, but it sure works for my wife, and that's all that counts. <laughs> Nicely played. <laughs> thank Nicely you. Played. Hey, I wanted to talk to you because you had an interesting life before on this side of politics. You actually yes. did modeling for things like pandemics, which is why I wanted to talk to you. What, what was your job? Yes, thank you very <laughs> much. So I've always been an ops research analyst. That's actually my ops degree. research Operations analyst. research analyst, that's correct. Uh, and I was the chief scientist of NORAD Northcom uh, from 06 to 08. So you've done modeling. Have you done modeling for pandemics as well in that? Yes. And you see, um, um, the, the, the behavior patterns of uh, viruses and pandemics are actually well understood scientifically. Uh, coronavirus has some different behavior patterns. That's part of what makes it dangerous. Uh, we should not say that this is not a dangerous uh, um, virus because it is dangerous, right? But uh, all of this can be modeled. And the response to be behaviors to a pandemic can also be modeled. So if you issue a stay in place order, you should be able to model what kind of outcome do you get from that. Uh, if you issue a social hey, distancing, hey, 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 you look, should get that too. Let me see if I'm following you because yeah. this is fascinating. So you know, we've all seen the models of, epi uh, of these pandemics. Mm -hmm. you know, we see it in movies where they have the map of the United States and there's hot spots and then before you know it, the whole place turns red. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's modeling. What you're saying is there, there needs to be modeling as well of the governmental response. Oh, yeah. That is, so given that this is going to happen naturally, if we pull this lever, close down restaurants, what happens? If we pull exactly. this lever instead, what happens? Is That's it, right. And, and you I, actually did this, this type I of I actually modeling? did these kinds of things, and I'm going to use a very scientific term here, but if you use a stochastic process, which means imprecise modeling, you can usually get pretty accurate to within 10%, 10 to 20% of what actually would really happen. So, for example, when the president decided to discontinue travel to China, yep. that was a response mechanism, and you can actually model how that would address the pandemic. Right. Uh, also closing of Europe. Also all these other uh, things that we're doing as response mechanisms, they can all be modeled. And you can actually try to characterize those in the model and try to figure out which ones of those would be more or less effective. And also uh, some of the specifics about how you should do it. So that's all that all can be modeled. All right. You did this modeling. Right. Therefore, what are you saying that it has been done? for what we're dealing with now. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been done. It hasn't been done right. What, what are you seeing? You, you're, you're inside the machinery. Tell yeah, me. Yeah, sure. Well, I th uh, my sense of it is, and, and you know, we talked about this briefly before, I think modeling can also be used to help us figure out how to deal with infrastructure development on highways and so forth. Coming to a general point, right, I think modeling can be used extensively to figure out uh, government response patterns that work better uh, so that we don't make mistakes in those response patterns, right? I think that's really, really important. I'll give you one example. The Centers for Disease Control in uh, uh, one of their releases said that we could have as many as 1.6 uh, people dying from this pandemic, right? 1.6? 1.6 million. million. I'm million. sorry, 1.6 million. The problem is it was 1.6 million if there were no responses at all. If you did absolutely right. nothing, didn't close down travel to China, didn't do anything, it could be up to 1.6. But what did the press do with that information? They reported this very scary number without telling the citizens that that, that, that was the number if you did nothing in response. So response mechanisms bring those, uh, those challenging and dangerous numbers way down. They really do help. Uh, so, so, and, and, we're, and we're, we're not getting an opportunity to look at uh, some of those response mechanisms and how they can be of benefit. So, you know, I'm going to push you on this. Sure, so please, here, here go, go for it. So, has, I, I understand on a federal level they've done mm -hmm. that. Have they done that on a state and local level? Uh, 
My sense of it is that uh, I'm, a, I'm a little worried about that. And I'll tell you, one of the things that's important right now, we're in a crisis right now. Now is not the time to, to criticize the state or to criticize any state. But I'll tell you what I do want. After this is over and, and we uh, have more or less gotten back to normal life, I'm very interested in the state of Colorado and other states really thinking deeply about using modeling where they can think about what kind of response mechanisms might work and might not work. And if they have the model in place, they can put in different things as it shows up. My sense is, yeah. mind you, it's just a sense. Mm -hmm. My sense is this is a catch as catch can type of situation. Uh, we're gonna close down restaurants instead of putting in rules that say you need to have your tables far enough away. Mm -hmm. you know, we're gonna, we're gonna um, I never thought an act of civil disobedience would be going to work. So now I think we've taken this and they're trying their best, but the modeling isn't just about, just about those people getting the virus. It's about the economic devastation that Absolutely. follows on this. That's right. And that these levers that are being pulled might help on, on, on this, certainly will, and I'm glad. Mm -hmm. But some of those levers are going to destroy our economy in a way that could, could be very, very long before we, we can recover. I think that's such an important point because there's a bunch of levers that the governor can pull and other leaders can pull. And if you don't really know what, the res what that response will do, uh, if you don't really understand all of the impacts of it, you could really cause a whole lot of harm that you don't want to that you don't want to create, right? So, like in in certain places, right? Well, in a lot of places in Colorado, certainly in El Paso County, uh, restaurants are still open, but it's only for takeout, right? right. So, um, I'm now leading a team in uh, in El Paso County. Uh, we just put it together to deal with the economic recovery, the response to fixing the economy, right? Uh, a major part of that is private citizens and companies because uh, the key to that being effective is to get the market working. And what does that mean? That means we need to be encouraging people to participate in the economy. Uh, if a restaurant is open and they're doing takeout, do takeout, right? You can buy gift cards. Uh, that's another thing you can do. If you've been thinking about remodeling your kitchen, call a company that does it, get a contract while we're waiting for clearance to go back to normal life and ask them to put that on their calendar so they can fill their sales book. That's private response to help the economy uh, bounce right back as soon as we have clearance. This is Everything so important. Everything you just mentioned is something I'm not going to do if I can't go to work and I don't have the money to do it. I'm right. not going to go to the drive-through. Right. I'm not going to go get a gift card. I don't even know if that business is going to be in operation when all this is over. Yeah, I want to get my house repaired, but I'm out of a job now. So, I mean, I, I agree with what you're doing, I mean, mm -hmm. but it is difficult to plan for those things with this type of uncertainty. Let me, let me go back to these levers. Yes, please. So you got these levers of closing borders, stopping travel to China, right. Europe, right. Uh, shelter in place, right. uh, um, gyms are going to get closed, this is going to get closed. Out of all of those, which lever do you think is the most helpful to slow the virus? And which one do you think is most harmful to slower or hurt the economy? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and again, I know you haven't run the calculations. Yeah, I have haven't the, had a chance to but, run the calculations. But you've been doing this. Uh, I've been doing this a long, long time. time. Just and give I have, me your gut I, feeling. Yeah, my gut feeling is I think the number one most important thing we can do to, to fight the virus, if you feel sick for any reason, even if it feels just like a slight cold, don't go to work. Don't. Stay home. Uh, call your health care provider, whoever that is, your doctor or whoever, and get advice. Uh, isolating when you don't feel well is very important. Uh, so that, I think, is the number one most important thing. Uh, these that, other things that like... Is, that is a tiny little lever compared to everybody don't go to work. That's right. That's right. So there's a big difference between those two. Uh, and, you know, to the extent that companies can... Uh, and, and I think only on a voluntary basis, to the extent that companies can keep people at home, even when they feel good, this does help in reducing those opportunities for spread. And the problem with that is that coronavirus is very contagious even before you have symptoms. That's one of the problems with coronavirus, right? But I think that can be done very effectively on a voluntary basis. I can tell you a lot of people have done that voluntarily in El Paso County. Uh, our county itself, we have 2,800 employees. 
uh, we, have, we have less than 50% of them, much less than 50% of them working in offices. So yeah. there's a bunch of voluntary responses workers, that are very Only very half effective. of them were working anyway. <laughs> now, now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> All right. So answer the other part of that question. Right. So the lever that would help the most is everybody who feels even slightly sick you have to self-isolate. Self-isolate. I, I would also put in the social distancing to me. Seems I think like, that's, I like a, I think a that's real, appropriate. And yep. I wouldn't, I'd even go so far as to say that there are some regulatory things we can do to help that social distancing, such as, hey, uh, if your capacity is 200 in a restaurant, uh, you have to make sure that every table is 10 feet apart. And then, right. you know, I mean, I think those are, those are right. things I would go for. Which lever does the most amount of economic damage compared to helping stop the, the uh, anything that does substantive shutdown of the economy is is really really dangerous because without without that economy people they they don't have resources to solve their own problems right um, the markets the markets can solve enormous amounts of problems we need it as a tool right to help us work through this so even if we have a public health order I think there's enormous numbers of things that can still be done. And then as soon as we have clearance from public health, we need to roar this economy back into so which, place. So which lever that has been pulled from your point of view? Again, you haven't done the modeling. I'm not right. going to hold you to it. Which, which lever, if you had uh, the power to go, you shouldn't have done that one, put right. you back? Which one would well, I be? worry deeply about uh, shelter in place. I think that's probably one of the most severe. And I think there's, it's problematic because it's shelter in place, but then not essential services. And when you go down that path of what is an essential service, if you have people that need to drive snowplows so that we have safe roads, then you need gas stations. If you need gas stations, then you need mechanics. So now we get into kind of a dangerous place of the government deciding what is an essential service and what is not an essential service. So we're going to damage certain parts of the economy and try not to damage other parts. I think that becomes very problematic. It would be entertaining if it wasn't so devastating and painful that politicians would know which levers um, to, 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 mm -hmm. to move and that they know what essential services are. Mm -hmm. You just spelled it out perfectly. So this is a, so when the shelter in place order went through in Denver, originally liquor stores were not on it. There was a line around the liquor stores all over, people right. on top of each other trying to get their last bit of booze. Right. Uh, and then he said, oh, well, no, that's, that's essential. And they all dissipated, and therefore they're not climbing on top of each right. other. Right. You know, Doesn't so, that sound so, like so a politicians, perfect... Politicians know <laughs> what is essential. The very last yeah. people I would trust to make a decision of what is essential in, the, in that business cycle right. would, would be guys who are elected. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, you know, like another example, if you were to say non-essential is airports because you've got a lot of people coming from yeah. a lot of places going to an airport. Yeah, okay, that's fine. But the airports are being used to fly needed supplies to other parts of the state, right? Uh, you've got airplanes being used to fly cancer patients to hospitals. So you, cut, you shut down an airport and you have these secondary effects. So you end up now parsing what is right and what is wrong at an airport. That's very, very difficult. Grateful for the work you've done. Thank I you. think what you're trying to get done afterwards is say, how do we handle this in the future? Because if this bad virus, this bad flu mm -hmm. can trigger this, I don't know how many others might trigger it in the future. And right. we can't afford to do it this way. Right, we can't afford it. And I got I just uh, kind of one quick thing I want to yeah. say, right? While following the direction we have from our public health agencies and we can do the assessment about uh, how good or not good that was later, but follow it today. But while following that, do everything you can to buy. Buy, 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 buy local. Keep the economy running if uh, uh, that's so important. The markets are the best place to, to save us in all of this. And uh, not only do we need open markets, but we need people participating in those markets. That's back, what's going to put that everybody lever, back to work. That martial law lever of shelter in place. Yeah, you can't buy, buy, buy if one, you don't have a job and the stores are closed right. because they're not essential. And that's another key point. It's something that we are homing, uh, homing in on uh, down in El Paso County. Another focus point, right? Jobs, jobs, jobs. We've got to keep people employed. In order to do that, the companies have to have a demand signal of buying so that they will keep their employees. And what is all that? That's market. Break the law, go to work. 
Stan, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thanks, John. I appreciate the time. If you enjoyed that conversation, by all means, click one of these other great programs. We have the best conversations with the most fascinating Coloradans. And subscribe to our channel. Just click down below and hit that little bell button, too. You don't want to miss a single show.